let's see some demonstrations and now let's see. So first of all, I will uh, uh, write simple program to read some data into a array. So I will create the program marks.c. Uh, first input h5 and I have my main method. Now I create a integer array for marks which file it. So I can Layer it like that. Like that. So So when you want to print them out, so I could simply use a for loop. So I declare for loop into the zero, I less than five, and I say I plus plus, and then use print here. And Then marks I. Right there. Right? So I initialize array and I print them back on the terminal. So let's combine that. Then I run what you see values printed the term. Assume now I want to read those values from the term. For that I can maybe create a program or function or read array which take integer array maybe a uh, to the uh, to the sorry to the functions and in the for loop So here now, I initialize with some elements as you see, and I now say read a and pass mass array to the function. Within the function, maybe I put some. Elements. 
like that. Then, so I have five element, right? So let me now convert it as problems. Okay, let's see what was the issue. Okay, here we don't need that. Combine and then when I run that, just place it the file in one, two, three. So you see, it enters one, two, three, four, five. Right? When I enter those, it prints those. Even though I initialize with some elements, so that overwrite it by this read a with a function. So I call read day, it comes here, and then it prints that and asks me to enter the five elements in that folder. So it assigns each elements to this array, just passes here, and then I print it. So let's say after I enter in five elements, I want to change that to be 10 elements. So where should I change? I have to change here and I have to change here and I have to change here, here, so many places. How can I simplify this? So basically we can simplify like that. Maybe we can define sorry, something goes wrong. Maybe I can define the array size. Let's say size to maybe like eight. And instead of like fixing it here, I can use size now. I don't need to declare it here because I'm reading it from the keyboard. I create a mask. Array with the size, size is given on top. And instead of pi here, I use now size. And then instead of pi here, I use size. Instead of pi here, I use size. Right? Size is defined here on the top. So now my marks arrays automatically become 18. So let's see. Then combine. It's eight element array. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you see it works. So if you want to put it back to five element, I just want to change only one case that is here. I see maybe like three. So entire program starts with that. So that's why. So if you have something like this array size like fixed thing, which you use throughout the program, you have to define in the top. That is very convenient if you want to change that. So there's only one place you have to change. Everywhere it automatically changed it. Right. So that demonstrated how to create the, how to read the elements to the array. Let's add a function to calculate the addition of this array. Maybe I want to calculate a function which returns the addition. So I have function for add, which take the integer array. So I declare that function here, and we take the array. 
what it do take each element starting from zero to less than size and add maybe I create the variable called tor run uh, AI, all right. Maybe I need here an integer variable for equal to zero, and then each element of this array is make it like like the integer. I will add it to the total. Then finally, I return the total. So that is it. Of these elements in there. So if you want to then add them, you can read there, then I add the elements of marks array. So it returns the addition. So I need to have another variable. I define it as zero. Equal at marks. So then I use printf statement here to print total equal dash t the new line. Like that, right? Right. So, I combine it. Um, what is that? It asked me to, they asked me to enter three elements. Right? Total of these three elements is six. So in case we want to get then, let's say average. So average is total divided by uh, g average equal. So I want to get it as two decimal point for example. And basically average is total divided size right maybe I change the size of the array to be five right. so in this print test print statement will print the average uh, total and the average right so let's see this up. so run it now I want it to find it So it has one, two, three, four, five. Then my total is 20. 20 divided by five should be five, but we got it zero. Let's see. So because I asked to print it as decimal, uh, plotting point number, but to divide total in the size, it is basically integer. So because of that, we need to cast it to a plot. I think now I should get the correct answer. So I combine it back. Two, three, four, five elements. So you see get the answer. So maybe I run it back and type something like this. One, two, three, four, five, right? Right? You get it with 4.2. Correct answer. So this score it has 
of the casting. So if we divide this, both are two integers, it's written the integer, but I want it as floating point number. So then I need to tell the system convert it to the float using this float. That is called object uh, variable cast. So casting into the float, convert uh, integer into the float, so then I get the correct answer. So you see, I have a simple program which reads some array and add the elements in the array and print the addition and average value on the term. Right. Now let's see we want to write the program to store a name, that is a character array. So I create another program or name.c So I now create a character array. Maybe if I say here, I define the size twenty. That's better, and then name size and. I want to now read it. Read name from the keyboard. So I use scan. Scan. So there I say this is a string. And pass name here for reading. And then this will print it. I Print that name. Character array, then scan it and print it by use and then make this. What could be the issue? Size of character array. Sorry, I forgot to close. Yeah. And then run it. It asks me to type my name. I type it right. So that's right. So I type control B. So it's a, it only print castle. So as you may understood, the scan is free. First word. Only that. But let's say I won't read the entire name. So there I would I need to use. Different command here. Instead of scanning, I should use a function for get this and then type. Let's try to compile. So 
So you see, see, there is a bone thing. Get as function is dangerous. Should not be used because of this memory or flow reason which I mentioned. So instead, they suggest to use if get. So I have to use if get x and then array name. Then using size of I can name of this size. Oh, I can pass size because I already know. So I can use size here. This is size of and then this td in so std in and if we compile it compile now so from france now ask me to type my name i wrote it i enter it so you see it read the entire Well, instead of print f, if I want as a simple command which uses with the string called uh, put this, so that also works. If get text to read, put text to print. That's for strings. So one. So you see same result. Right. In addition to that, there are so many other string manipulation functions. So if you want to use them, you have to include include string string dot h5 for sure it should be available maybe i create another string for s right and maybe i copy using str cp by string copy i copy uh, resources to the name. Uh, the strings in the array name I copy to the string as here. Name actually I read the value. And now instead of uh, printing uh, name, I print as so name copy to S string copy so string h has string copy function so let's try whether it has uh, string copy is available even though string clocker is not available in this gcc compiler let me run here so I type. You see, it's copy the string which I entered to a different string. So I'm not printing now here, you see name. So that I'm printing, I'm not printing name. I read name, I copy name to S and then print S. So print string copy is available in string .h, like that. So there are several functions available. So using that, you can kind of manipulate the strings. 
Right. Now, let's try to study the command line arguments. Right. Uh, yeah, I maybe create a new program. Maybe. And then I use the main method here. Uh, that uh, that main method has arguments. Main main function. Main function has arguments. So we use like that, you know. So let's say return return zero. So main function look like that. Now I add parameters to the main function. So I add two parameters. One is the integer for a r b c number of arguments. Other one is the character, two dimension character of an arrow G pointer to the character. So that is multi-dimension character. So we will discuss pointers later on, what it is and pointers in the other session. Okay, I'm creating a, this is string array or what we call character multi-dimension array. Right, so I create these two. So then let's see in the for loop here. This uh, it consists of number of arguments. So I print less than a R G C say i plus plus and I say pointer or oh, I use puts maybe puts uh, dot i so each element I print right okay. so let's compile this Compiles. Okay, problem is here. Yeah. And and uh, I and the I N right main method. Right, it should work. Five and run. So you see, it's this is a program name. It's from print since it has only the first start. So if I say the second argument like that, this is the first one, and this is the second one. So I get two printed. So similarly, I can type crazy. This is the first one, second one, and the third one. So it did first one, second one, 
and the third row, like that. So each argument will be uh, taken one after other, right? So as you know, we want to run a program, write a program called add, which uh, works like that. So let's say I type add and then want to should add these two numbers. How do you write like that? So maybe I take a copy of my name and name it as add.c. And then I got one left. So here I want to add the two numbers even. So for that, whatever the argument we pass, actually pass it as string. So if you want to add them, it should convert it to an integer. String should convert it to an integer. For that, there is a function available for it as ASCII to integer. So for example, if you want to add, let's say, two arguments, I convert them ASCII to integer. Which ASCII I want to convert? A R T B one and I add two ASCII to as k to integer a r g v two these two will add it. so this as k to integer function available in standard library s t e dot h So maybe I say if a r g c number of arguments less than not equal to three, let's say not equal to three, not equal to three, I print instruction of using that if you And everybody knows how to use that function. So, not okay. equal three prints use as two add two plus three. So else as add this and print. If it is not equal to three, I print this error message from the terminal. If it's not, if it is equal to three, I add first uh, second parameter and the third parameter to get it after converting into the integer and assign that to variable sum and print that sum on the top. Right. Let me combine my program now. Combine and find that. So maybe I compile it to the program called add.c. Then I run not edit out add. Let's see, 
used as add two three. So like that. Yes, say four two five two four six. Oops. In crash, okay. It crash because I print I this is integer sum, but I print it as S. It should be D. Right. I exit. Right. And then I run this. Add four to five six. So I miss one more. So I can add any two numbers like 100, 200. So sum is 300. So this is zero parameter that is first, and then this is second and third. So we can access that with ARGV1 and ARGV2. So we, they are in strings. Because of that, ARGV1, we convert it to the integer and ARGV2 we convert it to the integer, add them together, put it to the sum and print them. So like that, we can pass variables to the program we run. Like here. So let's call it as command line arguments. Right. Now, Let's see some uh, functions where we kind of like uh, the difference between pass by value and pass by reference and what I mean that. Yeah, write uh, a function, a program called f1.c. And I have a function for left one, which stay pages as input. Right? And then my main method, there are no command line arguments. So there I and then I create a integer x called pen and I print it. Inside, I print x here. Right. So then I call the function f1 with x. So let's define the function as the one here. F1, which is x here. And what I do here, I change x to 100. And inside the function this is right here so let's see so what happens here so there is a function for f1 which takes the integer variable s and inside that I have Change the value of x to 100 and I print them. So after calling the function, I print the value of x. Okay. So, so let me. That's the issue. I have to. Yes. 
T D I O dot H I to go back to the stream. Right. Compile. That's one layer of cloud. See, inside is 100, but outside is 10. That means we, when you pass the parameters to the function, they are passing as by value, not as reference. So it's copy of x, value of x will pass here. If I change something here, that's if it on the inside, so it print 100 here. But when it comes outside, value of x is still 10. Right? So we are passing that as a value. So if you want to get the change back to the main function caller, so you have to return it. So for example, here you have to say return x here. And then you can assign whatever return to here. So then obviously then change here is return and that return will assign to the variable back. So then it get changed here. So let me compile and show you that. Okay, it's, I have changed that here. This is, if we did return the integer value x, that should be then integer, not the one. It should be integer. And that was the right. compile and run. You see now inside and outside both same. Why it's so? Because we return this x and we assign that x to the x back. Otherwise, whatever we pass here, pass by value. Changes here not effect back to the end function. So that is passed by value. Passed by references. Let's, let me change this to take uh, take an integer array. Maybe like two elements integer array. And here x is let's say two element integer array which has 10 and 20. Okay. So here, let's see, it's 20, 20, 20, 20. And here, I call function net one with x, right? x is now where? Right? Then I print uh, these two elements. x0. And it's not, right after calling the function f1. And now this function f1 is void and we get a f1 that is a integer array. So inside that now, inside that now, like I put x1 to Hundred. So second element and change two thousand. So inside that now I bring two elements. X zero and X one like that. So, so let's see the result. Uh, return to the remove. So this is returning values here. So what's here happens? So I create a string uh, integer array, two elements, they are 10 and 20. And I call a function f1. So it is f1 here, pass that integer array to that function. Inside the function, the second element I change to 1000. And I, inside the array I print the first element and the second element. So it should print there. What 10 and 1000, right? So that is that change here 
I change the second element to 22,000. So let's see whether that reflects the domain. It should. So I compile this and bring it out from there. You see, inside it 10 and 1,000, outside also 10 and 1,000. Why? We are passing array as reference. We are passing the address of x. And you call f1, we pass address of x to this function. So if you referring here, it's referring to the same place, which is in the code. So if something changes, it reflects the main program as well. We don't need to do return. So you need to be very careful when you get an array to the function. If you get change here, that reflect back into the main program. Right. Now, let's try to understand a little bit of uh, multi-dimension arrays. All right, multi-dimension arrays. Okay. Uh, for that, I will give exercise, you remember? Uh, to do a multi dimension array, to my add multi two dimension arrays together and multiply this together, the two dimension arrays to multiply and then add. I have given exercise. So, what I would like to see you implement it, let's say I write a matrix multiplication. Right? So, I will Partially write the program for your information. You can complete it as the exercise. So I let's say I uh, include include s t u d a o dot h five. Right? Then maybe I want to create a multi-dimensional array. So I define. Uh, define rows and the columns. That's not fair. I define how many rows. Let's say two rows. And I define columns. And see, M N is right, columns. Let's say in short, C O L columns. C O L is columns. This is rows, this is columns. Let's say column three. So then I said we need to write a function to read that multi-dimension. Let me write a function to read it. So my read function take integer, but multi-dimension array, which has this much of rows and this much of columns. So that is the declaration. Okay. Now this is my main function. Yeah, what I do, I create a multi-dimensional array called M1, which is M1, which has this much of rows. And this much of columns that I call M1. Then I have define a function read. I read multi dimension array M1. Then let's say after that I want to print that multi dimension array M1. Okay, so then I return 0. Right. So this is my main function. Then obviously I have to implement my read method, which take uh, multi-dimension array in rows and columns. Right. 
multi-dimensional array in rows and columns. So to my preview. So then let's say I do it and say something like that. And uh, uh, by I use multi-dimensional array to store this matrix. So I ask the user to enter this much of rows, this much of columns, matrix. Enter whatever two by three matrix. Right. So in the read method, now I should read that two by three matrix. How can I read that? In order to read that, so one dimensional array to read it, I need a folder. With multi dimensional array, I need two folders. So, like that, let's say I have a folder just in future i, which goes from zero to this number of rows and plus plus. Right. Then I need another for loop in the integer j zero is to j columns j plus plus so j plus plus this number of columns. Right? I don't need this. this number of columns. Then what I should do is scan each element. Yeah, integers. So what should I scan in each n multi-dimensional array? I throw J's color. So that's my rate. I have two volumes. First, it goes from I row, zero row to this number of rows. And each row, I have to go zero column to this number of columns. And scan each element in each row, each column. So it's a two for loops I require, since it is a multi-dimensional array. In order to rate the matrix, I need such Two for loops. Similarly, I can implement my print method, which state multi dimension array columns like that. Yeah, I want to print each element. Again, I need two for loops, which goes equal zero, I less than. I plus plus. Then I need another order. Int j equals zero j plus then columns j plus plus. What I want to do now? Print it. Okay. As integer. I want to print and then put a space, obviously, not new line, each element, M, J element. I need now, curly bracket. Then here, if there are no curly bracket, because in the for, for loop execute only this for loop, that execute only this can. Now under this row, I want to do two things. First thing I want to do is print each element of the columns by putting a space here. After that, I want to put a new line to go to the next line to print the next row. Otherwise, it gets confused. 
So in this outer for loop, now have this for loop and this print. In the previous day, outer for loop only has one for loop that has only one state. So we don't need curly ones. So here in this outer for loop has this for loop, which prints each element in the row, that is be each columns, and then new line, and then finally it ends. This is my print state. Okay, now we have read and print the matrix. So I need to declare now my print. It take multi-dimensional read, rows, and columns. Like that. So you see, I am reading a matrix for M1 into multi-dimensional array. Here I declare matrix M1. Use read method, read function to read it, and print function to print it. Yes, that I can. I want to run DCC. So many errors. No worries. Let's carefully have a look at this station. So I define rows and columns. Then I create a multi-dimension array here. Which takes here columns. Rows and columns, right? And uh, white print three. Here, then rows and columns here, which is M1, and then here I read it and print it. So then here there is a read matrix. I say print zero ls five zero ls five columns. So if I understand right, so J of this is the same color. J equal zero, J less than plus J plus plus, and then scan it. Let's go. Then here, print it. Cross, columns, and all. This is end of this print. Okay. This end of that. Sorry. We need one more to go. Oh. So let's see. It. Hmm. Still has errors. Hmm. I think this is wrong. Let's see, what would this is the problem. Let's scan if I made a mistake, you may notice that. It should here uh, insert. Should emphasize in size. Right. Uh, and that is fine. And then that is also here. In two dimensional array. Columns, it's two dimensional array. It's return void, right? We then print columns. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, here you see there is a scale method. I did not use it previously. So let's get right here. Close. I have to close it. Then columns close. Mm -hmm. I think I will. Now I think. Screen. 
Find the matrix. So it asks me to enter 